So in last year's Mizuno drive reviews, I mentioned I would love to see this driver in black. And that's what they've done. And I mentioned about having this adjustable driver much simpler. And that is also what they've done. These are the new Mizuno drivers for 2019 and they look phenomenal. The best drivers I have ever seen. It's all well looking good. Do they actually perform? Let's find out. Hi guys, it's Rick Shields, PJ Golf Professional. If you are new to my YouTube channel, welcome. Hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on any videos. If you enjoyed this video, smash that like button and share this video around. Let people know about the review. You can do it via WhatsApp, social media, email. Tell your girlfriends about the new Mizuno drivers. So this is the new Mizuno ST190 driver. It comes in the ST190G option as well, which is a driver with more adjustable weights, which I will touch on in this review. So the prices of the two drivers slightly differ. The ST190 is priced when it first comes out at £399, $399. Where the ST190G, the adjustable weighted version, is £449 or $499. So I'm going to focus my attention on the ST190 driver. This driver is the best looking driver I have ever seen. I think it just looks Stunning. I love the fact that now Mizuno brought out a full black driver, black face, black top, black bottom. I love the fact that the bottom of the golf club is so sleek and symmetrical. It's very striking. It's a very good looking driver. And then sitting in the club behind the golf ball, I love this new introduction of a carbon back. I think that looks really classy. My only critique is that the fact it's a shiny gloss finish. Personally, I'm a fan of matte topped drivers. That's my only, only critique. If this was black matte with the carbon, wow, dream world. Let's see what happens maybe next time. But from every angle you look at this driver, the shaping of it, that even the text, the detail, it looks super premium. It looks everything that you'd want from a driver, certainly from this spec. As you can tell, I'm a big fan of the looks. But looks isn't everything. We know that. It comes down to performance, feel, sound, or there's a whole lot more that goes into producing a good driver. So that's where I tested the ST190 indoor on GC Quad using Pro V1s against my Optum Performance chart. So after I hit a few shots, I was pleasantly surprised and pleased with the results. We look at my Optum Performance chart coming up on screen. And then I throw in the ST190 distances and data. As you can see across the distances, I was hitting it marginally further than my average. And I mean marginally by only one yard. I was carrying the ball 285 yards and total distance 305 yards. So better than average, but only slightly. Launching the ball at 13.2, perfect. And spinning it at 2,300 RPM. So then we look at the club head data and ball speed for the ST190. I was swinging it fast, 113 miles per hour, and getting 162 miles per hour ball speed. That's on the higher side of my spectrum, so giving me good numbers and ball speed. I took the opportunity as well to test it against the ST180 from last year. So the blue driver, which I was a big fan of, bar that blue topped crown. And surprisingly, the distances are actually slightly longer with the ST180. I was carrying the ST180, so the blue driver in simple terms, 287 yards, 309 total distance, launching it a fraction on the higher side in the same loft and same shaft as I was testing the other driver, but with a spin rate that was lower. And in my original review of the ST180, the blue driver, I did mention it's a very low spin driver. Looking at ball data and club data, I was getting almost exactly the same as ST180. 190. So there's not much difference in performance. The only slight difference I'd see is the fact that the ST190 is a slightly higher spin than the ST180, which I don't see as a bad thing because it needed that little bit of extra spin for the average golfer. So at the same time, I also took the opportunity to test out the ST190G, which is the adjustable weighted version. Still the same looks overall, but on the bottom, there's two tracks, one on the toe, one on the heel, both housing a seven gram weight. It's very clever, this weighting system, because the two weights 
go forward and back. So more forward for lower spin, further back for higher spin, more forgiveness. You can also move both weights into one track. So if you wanted more of a draw biased or you wanted more of a fade bias, that's acceptable and doable. And it also features an adjustable neck sleeve. In fact, both drivers feature this where you can go up and down by two degrees and in upright settings as well. I wanted to test it in its forward least spinning option. I cranked up the loft a little bit and put the weights forward to test out its capabilities. And these are the numbers I was getting from the ST190G. It's actually hitting it slightly shorter distance, 282, still in my optimum range with 303 total distance, slightly higher launch, slightly lower spin than what I was getting from the ST190. I found it in that setting a little bit more volatile. I found that the shots that were badly hit were badly hit. I found that I was hitting them way more offline, um, a harder con to control setting, obviously because the weight's gone a little bit further forward. I found that forgiveness wasn't key with this driver, where the ST190, I was hitting them straight as an arrow. I found a lot of good forgiveness and very good accuracy. So that was the indoor testing on GC Quad, both kind of ticking the marks and flying through very nicely indeed. It was time to take both out on the golf course to see how they performed. So after time out on the golf course and testing both of these two drivers in the studio, I really enjoyed hitting them. I, the feel, the sound, the looks are the things that I really enjoyed the most. The feel off the face is great. The sound of both drivers has that slightly deeper kind of crunchy noise, which I really like. I think the carbon crown probably helps with that. And again, as I mentioned at the start of the video, the look of these two drivers is simply stunning. Every angle you look at them, they really are beautiful golf clubs. What I also really like with the ST190G is the simplicity of the adjustability this time. Last year's model was just so complicated. And the fact they've now just brought in two very simple tracks, very easy to adjust, and it kind of does the job. And then on the negative side was down to the performance. Now, both drivers did okay. They performed well, and certainly in my optimum performance chart, but they've not outperformed last year's model. In fact, last year's model outperformed this one. Now, the colors have changed from blue to black, and yes, the weight track system has gone a little bit simpler, but really, what have Mizuno been doing to enhance performance? If you're not offended by a blue driver, you're probably gonna be able to pick up the old one at a slightly cheaper price, and get really good performance, similar to what you're gonna get with these new drivers. The looks are stunning. 
don't get me wrong, there's nothing wrong with that. And I did get good performance, but I didn't get better performance. And when we're looking at trying to make changes, when we're looking at trying to get better at golf, performance has to be key. This is the best looking driver I've ever seen. But if it doesn't go better than last year's, it's not gonna go in the bag. Guys, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, smash that like, leave me a comment down below. If you're new to my YouTube channel, hit that subscribe, and we'll see you next time.